Russell Dybo is my guest this morning. He's the organization of organizer rather of Unsettling Canada 150, a campaign. He's a First Nations policy analyst. He's a member of the Mohawk Nation of Ganawage. He's in Innisfil, Ontario with me this morning. Mr. Dybo, a pleasure to have you on our program. Thank you, Heather. Good morning. Good morning. I have some breaking news to ask you about. First of all, the word from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau that National Aboriginal Day, as of next year, will become National Indigenous Peoples Day. And I'm wondering if that change or distinction is important to you. Well, again, you know, it's, it's um, the, the way that National Aboriginal Day came about was in the 1990s. Prime Minister Cretchen uh, took it over. It used to be called Aboriginal Solidarity Day. Uh, but for us, it's a spiritual day because um, it marks in our annual cycle of uh, ceremonies in our calendars, uh, it's the summer solstice. Mm -hmm. um, and so for us, it's very significant from a spiritual point of view. The government uh, always tends to want to use it for its um, purposes to promote policy uh, initiatives. So we're always, many of us are suspicious when the government wants to Declare it a certain uh, a certain day and talk about our contributions and that, but they don't really talk about the impacts on us. Okay, uh, what about the idea the private members' bill just floated to make uh, this day a statutory holiday nationally, as it is already in Yukon and Northwest Territories, but nationally? Well, again, you know, I, I think it's a kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, the meaning for us is different than how it's being used by governments. Uh, for us, like I said, hmm. it's a significant day. The summer solstice uh, marks an important part of um, the annual cycle of uh, ceremonies and activities and, um, you know, nature. And um, when you start uh, taking it over from the government point of view, they tend to use it for propaganda purposes. Okay. You just were listening as we were getting set to, to speak uh, to Chief Belgard as he reflected on July 1st, Canada 150, as it's being marked in this country. And uh, you heard his feelings. What are yours toward Canada 150? Well, we organized a campaign, um, you know, in honor of Arthur Manuel, um, you know, a late uh, leader that passed away in January. Arthur was probably the closest that we had to Nelson Mandela, you know, as a leader in Canada. He's a former chief and, uh, and uh, Indigenous leader. And he wrote a book called Unsettling Canada, a National Wake-Up Call. And uh, he wanted to do an anti-150 uh, event. Uh, and he also wanted to go to Geneva to challenge Canada at the United Nations in August when uh, Canada scheduled to appear. So those of us that worked with Arthur um, picked up... Uh, you know, the work that he was doing, and um, we organized this uh, Unsettling 150 campaign. Uh, we have a website in that uh, where people can organize their activities. We chose Canada Day because uh, it is the day that Canada celebrates its creation as a country, the British North America Act. Um, but for us, the British North America Act is nothing to celebrate because it denied our jurisdiction and basically allowed the provinces to take our lands, territories, and resources uh, without compensation. So this and, is, is, is uh, to counter that, and I understand that, a complimentary conversation, yes. if you will, with a call to action. What form will that take, Mr. Dybo, on July 1st? Well, people are organizing different events across the country. In Victoria, they're going to do a, uh, set up an encampment on uh, the legislature grounds uh, for a couple of days, I believe. In Toronto, there's going to be activities. In a number of cities across the country, different uh, people... Uh, are organizing events. Some don't want to disclose what they're going to do until they're ready to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but we are um, hearing from across the country that people want to participate and basically use the occasion of Canada Day to educate Canadians that, uh, you know, Canada still has to deal with the truth before they can start talking about reconciliation. As part, of, as part of the learning and education, there's also a reading campaign, which is part of uh, Canada Unsettling or Unsettling Canada 150. It's a really interesting project called Canada Must Read. Obviously a clever play on, on Canada Reads, as we have uh, on CBC Radio as well. But on the bottom of our screen, we want to direct uh, our viewers to some of the texts that you're suggesting. Uh, and when you, when you want people to look on these texts and read them with an open mind. What is the knowledge? What is the, the new perspective that you hope we gain at this time? Well, I think the, the knowledge is uh, we want uh, Canadians to know that colonialism isn't a thing of the past. 
it still exists in Canada today. Even the National Chief, you know, listening to him, you'd think he's talking about the past. But the Indian Act still exists. There's still uh, discrimination and racism against Indigenous peoples in the country, and we want to see that changed. And, um, you know, in the 1980s, there were constitutional talks that ended in failure. And those are the things, you know, the definition of Aboriginal treaty rights is something that's still unresolved in Canada at a constitutional level. So these are the things we want Canadians to be aware of, that we need to um, make changes in this country to make it better for all of us, because right now, even the Trudeau government's not uh, following the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And I knew you were going to be going there in August to, to press that point. I, I want to conclude. When we talk about, we do a series of interviews, Mr. Daibo, with people who are commemorating Canada 150 in a different way uh, from what you are doing, obviously. But I always ask them, my Canada is. And it struck me that perhaps in a similar way to what Chief Bellegarde was saying, I shouldn't ask you what my Canada is, or you could begin there, but I'm interested in knowing a hundred years from now where you hope your Canada will be. Well, I hope to see the Canadian Federation uh, recognize and accommodate Aboriginal treaty rights. You know, Indigenous governments and territories uh, outside of the Indian Act and outside of, um, you know, the federal policies, which are basically promoting uh, municipalization of uh, bands, Indian bands, and uh, extinguishment of Aboriginal title. We should be able to coexist, and that's what I think uh, we need to work out the arrangements of doing that. And land and jurisdiction are key parts of that.